And when you, you slice through that, I look at the data that the comptroller has in his, one of his reports, Comptroller Morgan, and he looks at a, gra at a freshman class coming in and of, into high school, and of 100 freshmen, about 65 will graduate in 100, in, on time. Um, we say about 80, but we're using a different formula. There's all kinds of different formulas, and we're, we're moving toward one that the Governor's Association have agreed to, and we think it'll drop our 80 down to somewhere in the mid to upper 60s. 35 or 36 will report either to a two or four year institution, to a community college or a university. 25 of those will be there the second year, and 17 of them will earn the degree, the associates or the, the bachelors, within 150% of the time. Mm -hmm. So if we're, we're getting now 17% of the students through a two or four year, and then if we add probably 20% of the 20 of that 100 going to a technology center, it gets us up into that you know, 35, 37, percent of our students that are being trained right. to a level uh, that will help them get that job to sustain a family of four. Right. Then I flip over to another report that talks about Tennessee jobs and for the first time I'm seeing the projections for the jobs requiring a BS degree exceeding 30 percent. It's 31 percent of Tennessee's jobs are projected to need a BS degree shortly. Another 37 percent of the jobs will require training beyond high school but less than a BS. So totally about two thirds of our jobs are requiring the, the training and we're only meeting, preparing just a little over a third. So we've got to double the number of children leaving high school, of our students leaving high school and going to receive the training they're going to need in post-secondary. And that's, that's the challenge. Well, we saw all the flap last year with the, the people not able to maintain their HOPE scholarships that they're getting through the lottery because they're not making it past their first year. And part of that, they say, is that they're not prepared for what, what they're facing. I agree. I agree, they're not prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, when we look at ACT, ACT has developed benchmarks for success. They've studied transcripts of students from across the nation, thousands and thousands and thousands of transcripts. And they've set some ACT scores that if you meet those, you have a 50% chance of getting a B or an A and a 75% chance of getting a C or better in freshman college work. And it's, we have about 70% of our students meet the benchmark in language, about 36% meet the benchmark in math, about 50% meet the benchmark in reading or social studies, mm -hmm. and only about 24% who meet the benchmark in science. Collectively, last year, 18% of Tennessee's graduates who took the ACT, which is it's a fairly high number, high percentage, met all four. And that's pretty close to that 17 in the comptroller's report that got the degrees. So we know we can do better, and that's one of our targets. As, as we move forward, we want to see those numbers, meeting those benchmarks, go up. And that's, we've targeted that through the American Diploma Project. Now, as, as we did the Diploma Project, first thing we did was to send our standards to achieve. They dissected them, laid them down side by side with the achieved standards to look for an alignment. We got the report back on a scale of zero to four. We were mo where zero is little or no alignment and four is strong alignment. We were mostly zeros with some ones and a few twos. Ouch. And very poor alignment. So we've, the department, uh, the consultants in language arts and math had brought in uh, writing teams, curriculum writing teams to address this and to begin to the rewrite. And the teams looked at it and decided it would be much simpler to start afresh to set our standards aside, pull out a clean sheet of paper, and start to work, and that's what they did. And they have just done yeoman's work. They've done an outstanding job, I believe. Uh, they, we have rewritten the standards starting with 12th grade and going all the way down to kindergarten in language arts and math. Those are the two areas that Achieve has worked on. We also have worked on science. It's not a line to Achieve because they haven't tackled science yet, but it was science's turn for textbook adoption for curriculum development. So we've tried to do a parallel alignment in the science area. Okay, through working through this, we sent them back to Achieve, had a second side by side, and we look much better. Uh, lots of threes and, and mostly fours with a few twos. So they've been back two more times since then for quality reviews, and now we're almost solid fours. We're very strongly aligned to those standards we believe that will prepare kids to do well on the ACT or the SAT. And, 
raise our scores on the NAEP assessment. Uh, and NAEP does a sampling of fourth and eighth graders in reading and math. And that's one of our Achilles heels. Mm -hmm, definitely. It's not unusual to see high school students on campus here at Vol State. How do you feel about dual enrollment classes? Oh, I think dual enrollment is, is, is great. Uh, we're a strong advocate of dual enrollment. And if you're familiar, if you're not familiar with public chapter 459, that was a bill, House Bill 99, that passed last year. Um, we need post-secondary and, and, and secondary to, to become familiar with it because it, it holds up dual enrollment and then re, and defines a new concept as dual credit. Dual credit is where there, it's a partnership between mostly probably community college technologists and perhaps universities. There are some college level courses that a high school teacher could teach and post-secondary could furnish the end of course exam to certify that they have the appropriate measure. And if they pass the course, they get high school credit. If they pass the exam, they can get college credit when they enroll at the university or college that offers that class. There's no tuition. It's kind of seed money, seed credits, to try to engage students who are not traditional goers to, to say, wow, I can do this. I can be successful in college level work. I think I'll give it a shot. And those, that's one of the strategies we have of trying to get that doubling, to get more students to get into higher, to higher ed and, and finish a training. In addition to the diploma plan, uh, we've, we also said you do have a master plan with the State Board of Education. That master plan spells out four <laughs> core principles, effective school leaders, effective teachers, rigorous, relevant curriculum, and sufficient resources. They're the roots or the foundation of the plan. The first two, fairly self-explanatory. Tell us about the curriculum and the sufficient resources as you see them in the master plan and how that relates to the diploma plan. Well, the, the curriculum, the work we're doing there is through the Tennessee Diploma Project. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the, that addresses those issues and, and the high school graduation requirements and the courses that kids have to take. Um, we have been looking at high school work and the requirements, I said, for over two years. All that came together as the stars have aligned and, and we've raised the bar a little bit, but mostly it's the rigor that's in the, the diploma project work. Uh, I'll give you two examples of what I mean by rigor. The content that's in today's Algebra One, we think has pretty much been watered down because it's been a high stakes exam and it's not very politically popular if you have a real hard course and kids don't do well on it. So we've, through, I think, unint unintentional choices, uh, set the bar pretty low. And as it turns out, we tend to teach what we test. And yes. so we've taught down, algebra has become algebra 0.5. And algebra 2 has turned into 1.3. So we, we think that by raising up to a good STEM algebra class in high school, we have we've tried to cure that problem. So what happened to the old algebra? What's in the, the standards that are in today's algebra, you'll find mostly in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade classes. So we believe that the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade math classes will provide a real strong pre-algebra preparation for the quality algebra they're going to receive when it's, we, we begin it with this year's seventh grade. So in two years when they become ninth graders in the fall of 09, mm -hmm. then they'll be, everyone will be in the new standards. And, and that's a little challenging. You know, I w if we had time to wait, I would like to have said this year's fifth graders. So they could have had a couple of years in the new standards in the seventh and eighth grade before getting that ninth grade. But our employers told us we can't wait. Mm -hmm. You know, the headline yesterday tells us we can't wait. We're already the, the slowest. We're struggling worse than any state in the country to, to find those good jobs and so we, we've got to have kids and, and uh, who are better prepared when they leave us to have a chance for the life that they want. 